Welcome to Summit. We're here with Tim from Digivac and we have a tech short on the bullseye line of controllers. Right now we are hooked up to a vacuum bottle that's just attached to a general manifold. Um, and so Tim is going to go over the details and the specifications of these products. So a lot of people are familiar with the SVG1. This is the vacuum gauge that a lot of people use for a short path. It works really well and it has a very wide measurement range and the sensor here is very inexpensive. Works great from a millitour to about six tour. So if you're doing short path like at a 100 millitour, 200 millitour, this is the one to use. But what if you what if you're doing something else? What if you're doing rotovaps mm -hmm. and or falling films? Falling films, and you want to have really accurate measurement at like 200 millibar. You know, you're 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 boiling at, off like all wet this. ranges where dry vacuum is not the case. Right. Yeah. That kind of thing. The bullseye is not so good. The, it'll read you a number, but it's it's just meant as just a mm -hmm. basic like rule of thumb, like where you're at. When you want accuracy for that, then you'd go to a piezo gauge. It's a mm -hmm. different kind of sensor. The sensor actually has an isolated diaphragm. So okay. so there's there's uh, which is this one. That's this one right here, yep. This one connects to the piezo gauge. And the whole purpose of that is to give you really accurate, um, very safe readings um, all the way from, say, one millibar all the way up to a thousand millibar, all the way up to atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. So that one works really well. Now, what if, Elliot, <coughs> what if you're, um, you're, you're doing some short path work and you're doing some research and you want to really dial that thing in, you want to dial it in really well and you want, you, you want even better accuracy? <coughs> Then, and we haven't really talked about this before, but then we have this thing called a capacitance manometer. Mm -hmm. It's isolated, which means the electronics are separated from the media. Okay. So, um, so uh, it, which it doesn't- Which means it doesn't matter if it's wet, dry, contaminated. Yep. And to clean it, you just rinse out the inside and wash it, right? The chemicals won't matter. Uh, chemicals, for the most part, won't matter. Okay, cool. You should really check your MSDS before you do that. But you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in general, yeah, it's totally washable. Um, and, and the good news about the capacitance manometer, it's 1% of reading. So right here, we have a 10 tour capacitance manometer. So what that means is from 10 tour, about 10 millibar, um, all the way down to um, about 100 mill millitour, or about 100 microns, um, it's very, very accurate. Okay. So it's got a narrow range, um, but really good accuracy in that range. So okay. if you're really trying to dial something in, that's a great gauge to use. Okay. So would you say that uh, which one is better for, let's say, um, falling film, rotobat, short path? What would be the, the target uh, consumer who's, who would instead not purchase this one and invest a little bit more money, say, in this sensor? Yeah, so um, for uh, falling film um, or for rotovaps, I would definitely go with a piezo sensor. Does it's that have a, the pressure or just vacuum? Uh, uh, good question. So this one um, has vacuum. It actually goes up to about 775 torr, so just about, just a little bit above uh, 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 oh. atmospheric pressure. Just a couple PSI, but not much. That's right. Okay. It's actually 15 PSI. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then, but the cool thing is we actually have another sensor for it um, that you can connect to it, and, uh, and this one is actually a compound sensor. Okay. So we actually just uh, played with this on an extraction system. On so a for closed loops. For so closed loops. So you can pump the system down, watch it go all the way down to the That's lower right. micron range. And then while it's operating, it'll tell you digitally what the pressure is. Yeah, and specifically the range here. This one wouldn't go into the micron range, really. This would go down to about 30 tour, 30 tour in vacuum, which okay. is effectively 29 inches. 29, yeah. Right. Um, and then, but at that it'll, point, you're pulling water and small vapors. It wouldn't even matter. Out of and you probably wouldn't get that low anyway yes. for the most part because yes. you know it's you're pulling stuff out. But it goes up to 100 uh, psi. Okay. And it also has an isolated diaphragm in there, so the, so it's, uh, you take other chemicals won't affect it. Not at all. Cool. For, so Excellent. for this particular one, you can clean it with whatever you want. Anything so this that's would be good for like a falling film that's always running under vacuum, and then if you had a closed loop uh, application, you would use this sensor right here, which is essentially the same, essentially the same type of sensor, but the internal is a little different, and it operates for pressure and vacuum. Precisely. Great, great. Um, and then this one particular, since you were saying, um, this is a little bit more of a higher end sensor, right? Yeah. So what's the cost difference between this and a standard type and why, and why would someone need this exactly? Um, so this is a, a, a 10 torque capacitance phenomenon and if you really want um, high accuracy because you're dialing in a system, uh -huh. um, that might be a good one to use. And a package for that, uh, you know, sensor plus mm -hmm. controller, you're talking about, you know, $1,500, some number like that. Okay. So it's quite a bit more. Um, so and, this is mostly uh, <coughs> if someone was doing pump down on vacuum repairs and things like that where they wanted very, very accurate numbers, right? Uh, yeah, you could definitely use it for pump down. Um, people use it when you're doing pressure control. Okay. Uh, because, uh, because this um, fluctuates less. And if you're using a particular pressure for pressure control, the, the, the tighter that is, 
the better the pressure control is going to be. Okay. Yeah. And are these at all interchangeable, or are they pre-built for each each sensor model? Yeah. So uh, all these um, cases are made in America. Uh, they um, the cases are are the same, but the electronics are completely different. Okay. This one uh, drives a, a, a thermocouple type vacuum gauge. Uh, this one drives a piezo type of uh, vacuum gauge, and then this one uh, drives an active gauge or a capacitance manometer mm -hmm. kind of vacuum gauge. Excellent. And what's the what would the customer's range be in pricing? I, I know we have it on websites all over the internet, but what's the range in pricing between this and say this one if they wanted to go to a closed loop? And do they have to order this one directly with this, or can they just order the package and purchase the sensor on the side? Uh, so um, yes, they can order this and then uh, purchase another sensor later. So Is they might want to. These two are interchangeable. Uh, yeah, you just okay. have to change a device setting to say, okay, I've got my vacuum sensor or I've got my, you know, my butane sensor. So one customer can purchase, say, this this the single piezo unit, and they can run it on vacuum applications and laboratories, and then unplug it and run it on their closed loop, right? Yep. Really good value. That's excellent. And is there any new things coming out in the market for these sensors that uh, customers want to be oh, like aware of? Yeah. So um, uh, this um, this uh, this dash this is actually the newest entry to the mm -hmm. Bullseye product line, and uh, right now we support a range of capacitance manometers, and coming soon we're going to uh, support a range of other kinds of sensors. So specifically, this device will allow you to actually do high vacuum. So when you actually okay. Uh, put in um, diffusion pumps and things like that, and, and you might want a portable gauge to just... Like a spot sensor. A spot sensor. That's excellent. Then a device like this will be able to do it. And all these things run with that Bluetooth app. And all these things allow someone who's managing a lab to see their vacuum from anywhere in the world. That's so, really good. Yeah. That's really good. Well, okay, Tim, so now that we've uh, learned a little bit more about these sensors, what's really important is let's talk about where they should and shouldn't be used, because some customers might be using the wrong sensor in the wrong application. Okay. So um, bullseye, uh, it's great for short path distillation. It's great for um, your rotary vein pumps or, or those kinds of pumps, mm -hmm. doing pump down tests to make sure those pumps are in good shape. Um, it's, uh, it's not a good gauge to use for hash when you're actually drying in vacuum ovens. Uh, this because uh, it gets contaminated. Yep, uh, and, and also this sensor gets really hot. And when sometimes people put a vacuum oven with butane and there's pressure buildup, you don't want a hot sensor in there. So, and also the pressure range that, this, that mm -hmm. the bullseye, that the um, SVG1 is at, it's, um, it, it, it's not really good there. The accuracy at um, 100 millibar and 200 millibar isn't so good. So you'd go to a sensor that has a different accuracy range that's better there. So like a piezo sensor, mm -hmm. that, has a, that has really, really good accuracy. Where the piezo is just right above a low vacuum sensor, and this one senses very low, similarly accurately between like 1 and 100 microns. But anything above that where you have things bounced around in the oven and the oven's still teetering at negative 29, this would be the solution for you. Yep. Okay. And then for this type of sensor? So this kind of sensor, <clears throat> um, this kind of sensor is probably not good for a, a general application. Like if you need a, uh, to, to measure a wide range, like you want to know if the door's open or the pump's on, this sensor wouldn't be good to use because that's such a narrow range. It's only two decades. It's mm -hmm. only from like a thousand tour to, to 10 tour or 10 tour to 100 millitour. Yeah. So the range is really small, so it ends up being really hard to use. But if you're trying to dial something in really tight, that's a good sensor to use. Excellent. And then if we were using a uh, like a severe application or severe duty wet, we would use the same type of piezo sensors you have here, but one that has pressure on it for like a closed loop, where it could get dirty, vacuum, pressure, all of that, but you wouldn't necessarily use it on a, a short path because it's not the lowest range sensor. It's the right in the middle. Precisely. So, so, so Elliot, the, our, our compound sensor that goes from, you know, 30 tor to 100 psi, this sensor would not be good to use in short path because the lowest it gets is 20,000 or 30,000 microns. Yeah. That's no good. You're not doing short path at, yeah. at that yeah. range. You need something that's really accurate below that. So this sensor would not be good to use. This sensor would be not good to use either. This sensor would be good to use the vacuum, mm -hmm. the thermocouple vacuum gauge, and this sensor would be good to use as well. Good, excellent. Okay, now we're gonna demonstrate the uh, indifference between accuracy on each unit. We are currently hooked up to a vacuum brand 12C Vario, so it's in the background maintaining about 60 millibar uh, vacuum. We just have a basic manifold setup, and we have the first, second, and third sensor. And at 60 millibar, Tim's going to cut in here and explain to us what the what like what we're seeing. This is kind of interesting, Elliot. So, at uh, 60 millibar, or about 44 tor, or 44,000 microns, we've got three different vacuum technologies here, and you can really see that one's good for this and one's not so good for this. So, for example, this particular one here, this is connected to a 10 tor capacitance manometer. So. 
in this particular range, in this 60 millibar, this is beyond its range. It's over range. So this vacuum sensor isn't measuring anything right now. So this isn't really useful if you want to measure mm -hmm. this range. Um, the, um, the, uh, this uh, SVG-1, this has a thermocouple vacuum gauge connected to it. And this is um, reading something, but it's not ideal. It doesn't have very good accuracy in here. Literally, Elliot, this could be like plus or minus 50% here. Okay. This one is quite accurate. It's plus or minus 2 tour. So right now we're reading uh, 44. Uh, 1,000 microns, which is about 44 tour, mm -hmm. which is about 66 millibar. This is the sensor to use in this range. Okay. And now we're going to go down a little bit lower and show you the differences that they perform as well. What's the next rating that we're going to hit? Let's hit 3 millibar. 4 millibar. 4 millibar? Sure. All right. So now we're going to bring it down and watch the sensors. So, Elliot, at 4 millibar, all of these uh, sensors are in their sweet spot. They all have decent accuracy at four millibar. Okay. Now at four millibar, this one, the capacitance manometer, is gonna be the, the best accuracy. Um, the bullseye um, is gonna be actually here, the worst accuracy, and then the, and then the piezo is gonna be the second accuracy. Okay. So from an accuracy perspective, at, at that four millibar, There we one, start going, it starts to two, read it a lot cleaner. Three. See this one? This is the most accurate. It's plus or minus 1% of reading. Okay, so right now we're stabilizing at, um, roughly nine millibar and we're going back down so it's taking us lower we're at eight millibar yeah and here and we're reading you know we're, we're, we're reading very similarly uh, where the sensors are placed if you look at all of this that they're, they're reading very similar numbers it's good when very you have similar when you have it's good when you have instruments that read the same numbers yeah. <laughs> yes. and here um, it's just uh, it's one of these unique ranges where all of these vacuum sensors uh, are, are kind of in their sweet spot and not only that, but when we look at the types of readings we get here, for instance, this range, this sensor is built in your in your facility, but you calibrate it to a specific range, right? That's right. And then this one gets calibrated to a specific range, and this one will get calibrated to a specific range. So if we wanted, let's say, a specific sensor to be accurate at 500 millibar or half vacuum, we would calibrate it at that range, but it wouldn't be as accurate as one one or 10 micron, right? So each one is, is calibrated to its best operating uh, uh, range. That's right. Uh, different vacuum sensors have different technologies and they are just better in certain ranges. And so now we are holding 4.3 millibar on um, the vacuum brand because it just, you know, battles some of the small leaks here. So we're at 4.3, 4.2 millibar. And now tell us which one's the most accurate and how many percentages off. Okay, they're, they're, um, they're actually quite similar uh, here. Um, the capacitance manometer uh, shown by the bullseye dash within 1% of reading. Excellent. So this is, the, this is the most accurate. Now, this is the next most accurate. And even though this is similar, here we're uh, plus or minus two tours our stated accuracy. So this is, this is a well calibrated gauge, but at this point, this it is shows. the least accurate. And which range do we want to hit next to show? Let's go down to 200 millitour. Which is... All right, so as you can see, we've switched the pump out to an Agilent IDP-7, a little bit of a slightly different uh, pump range, and Tim is going to start uh, talking to us about what's going on on the gauges that we're seeing, because we, we were before, I think, what was it, like 3,000, and now we're way below it. So tell us what's happening here. So now the piezo went down to about 500 millitour, and it's done. It's below its useful range. Quite frankly, I wouldn't use this gauge for much below one, one millibar or okay. one tour. So this one's done. It's under its useful range. We shouldn't look at this one anymore. The bullseye, still pretty good, going right down. The most accurate gauge right now in this lineup is actually the capacitance manometer. The capacitance manometer is showing that 270 millitour. Okay, and how come this one is slightly a little bit lower? It's um, plus or minus 15% of reading. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit different here. There's another thing that's going on is that we don't know exactly what kind of air it is, so, so it could be slightly moist. So there could be several things going on to, to make that happen. Is this considered to be in its accuracy range or is it lower? This is in its accuracy range. This is in its accuracy range right down to 10 millitour and it reads down to one millitour. But there's a percentage, you say about 15%, which comes with the uh, type of sensor, the Agilent sensor, which is a 536. Yep, the yep. 536. And then this one is a um, Lesker sensor and this reads slightly different, but this one's considered within 1%. That is correct. So it's 1% 1, 1 up or down. That's right. So if you look, they're, they're, they're kind of coming into their own right now. So as we approach a, a, lower, a lower vacuum and everything equalizes, you'll see the sensors will start uh, converging a little bit more. You know, it's very interesting, Elliot. Uh, one, one way that we can um, 
figure out uh, the moisture in the system is actually to compare a thermal sensor, which also mm -hmm. measures moisture content, to an absolute sensor uh, that doesn't measure, me um, use, uh, measure moisture content, yes. like a capacitance thermometer. So when those two come together, it's dry. And it's actually very interesting. You can see that direct difference where the, there's, a, there's a range. And if we hooked up 10 of these next to each other, they would slightly be different because yep. there's a 10 or 15% difference. That's if right. If you hook up 10 of these, they'll be within one or two of the reading range, right? That's right. That's, That's right. That's really fabulous. Well, so now you can see the differences in the sensors right up front. And I believe we're running... I don't have a sensor on this one. What do you think the pump is probably pegged out to? Uh, right now, that's that's uh, about 200 millitour. Uh, All right, so we're, we're sitting about 200 millitour, and here are the ranges that we're reading. And as you can see, it specifically says under range. As you saw, the other sensors that were higher, uh, in, the, in the higher test range that we did, this one said under range. So now you can see it flipping and directly giving us uh, its, 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 its application and usage accuracy. Yeah, pretty interesting. Well, thank you so much, Tim, and we'll make sure we get... Uh, all these details up on the internet for all the customers to see. Perfect. Thank you.